You're using skills inside Claude code. You felt this. You correct Claude, start a new session, but then correct the same thing again and again. But I fixed this. Here's a dashboard that I built with Anthropic's front end design skill. It looks good, but it completely missed what I asked for. But with auto learning enabled, Claude uses Shad CN's brand new project scaffolding correctly the first try because it remembered from my last correction and automatically updated the front end skill. Here's how to build this. Let's jump into Claude code. So now I'm in Claude code. And if I run the slash skills command, I can see that I have the front end design skill loaded locally and available for this session. And this one is simply the one I pulled off the Anthropic GitHub repository. And now if I give Claude code my prompt to build a dashboard page for a SAS analytics application, and then give it a few requirements of what I actually want, and this last line is going to be key. I'm going to say use Shad CN components and the Lyra style. I think it's going to mess this up and I'll explain why as we go here. And if we submit that, the first thing it's going to do is call that front end design skill, which is exactly what we want. And just using that front end skill alone should make it a slightly more interesting, better quality and more distinctive UI. So it went ahead and used that skill and it built it. And it did say it used the Lyra design system. But I'm skeptical of that. This is the application I came up with. So it's definitely used that front end design skill to give an interesting UI. And I did it in Chad CN, which is great. The problem is I asked it to use the Lyra style, which it hasn't done. What I actually meant by that, if we look at the Chad CN webpage, is, is there's now the ability in Chad CN to create new projects and predefine all the attributes. So you have your design set from the beginning. One of those attributes is the style. So I wanted to use Lyra, which is a boxy and sharp style. We see here, this definitely is not the Lyra style. And the reason for that is simple. Opus 4.5, the cutoff date for his knowledge is May of 2025. But this new project's release in Chad CN was just in December of 2025, after the cutoff date that Opus would know about it. Who has no clue about Shad CN projects or any of these presets? And it's a really good example of why you need some kind of memory inside Claude code, and specifically memory inside skills and self improvement inside skills. Because you're going to find things as you're developing. Maybe they're past the cutoff date of the model. Maybe it's just something the model gets wrong, not your preference. You want to be able to remember all those things so you don't keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Now back in Claude code, I can correct it, but I only want to do this once. So I'm going to say, this is wrong. That's not how Shad CN works anymore. There's a new Shad CN create command that lets you configure your entire project up front, component library styles, icon, themes, fonts, radius. And Lyra is just one of those five visual styles. And then at the end, I'm going to say web search for details of Shad CN projects. Now it's come back and actually asked me for all those parameters that you can put into a Shad CN project, like what icon set to use, base colors, etc. And now it's on the right path. Now it understands exactly what I'm talking about. And it's going to create it properly this time. It even says I'll delete the current project and scaffold it properly using MPX Shad CN create, which is perfect. And now you see it's actually using the create command with the presets. And now it's created it properly. It used that Shad CN create command. It passed in all the right presets, including the Lyra style. And so this looks right now. It's all boxy. And now it's correct how I wanted it the first time. Now that Claude code in this session has learned all that information about how to use Shad CN projects, the create command. I don't want to ever have to go through that again. I want to enhance that skill and therefore enhance its memory so it learns all that information. The next time I build an application, it knows exactly what I mean. And to do that, I built a new skill. It's called the auto skill. We see it's loaded here locally. And this auto learning skill, I, I built myself over time, just things that I found worked really well for improving skills. And I'll leave a link to this on my GitHub if you want to check it out and use it yourself. It's pretty straightforward. The skill analyzes coding sessions to extract durable preferences from corrections and approvals, then proposes targeted updates to skills that were active during the session. It acts as a learning mechanism across sessions, ensuring Claude improves based on feedback. And the way I set it up is inside the skill, it's looking for what I call signal detection. So these are things that it finds in the conversation that it can pinpoint are corrections or repeated patterns, approvals, for example. So when you say things like, no, use X instead of Y, or we always do it this way, or don't use X in this code base. Those are the kind of signals it's looking for to improve a skill. And then I also have a section for signal quality filters. These are kind of questions I have to ask to say, is this really justify a new update to a skill? For example, this one, is this new information I wouldn't already know? Like in this case, all that updates about Shad CN projects and the create command, it wouldn't know that. I think this is a good catch all because one thing that I've noticed a lot, I see a lot of skills around and they're full of information that Claude already knows. They're kind of useless waste of context part of the, of the skill. So I want to put some of these questions in place just to filter out and have a quality updates to all our skills as we learn.
And then when applying changes, I want to edit the target file. So there'll be the target markdown for that skill with minimal focus changes. And this one's important. If Git is available, do a commit and add a commit message. Ideally, all these skills will be in Git, so they're version controlled. So as it learns over time, it does new commits to the skills. You can keep a clean version history of when new information got into the skill. And now in Cloud Code, I can actually manually run that skill. If I just run auto skill, and I'll show you some ways you can automatically run it in a second. But just to get started, I suggest just running it manually if you do some changes. And then we see here, it came back with exactly what I wanted. It's come back with proposed text for the change to my front end design skill, that one I got from Anthropic's GitHub page. And it's put specifics here about how to use ShadCN and how to use the npx ShadCN create command. It gives it all the different parameters. It has information here about asking the user for their preference before scaffolding. And it gives an example of a preset URL format. It also went through all the signals I had in that auto learning skill. It actually gave me justification for why it added it. For example, here it says user corrections. And then it quoted me the thing I said in my response, this is the wrong, that's not how ShadCN works anymore. So it really backs up all the additions it does to the skills. And then we see it says exactly what skill it's updating. So this is actually my local copy of that front end design skill. And then if I apply that change, it's simply gonna update the skill for me. So from here on out, as long as I have this front end skill loaded, it's gonna be able to scaffold a ShadCN project exactly how I want it with using projects. Never gonna to have to worry about that again. And if I wanna run this automatically, just to have continuous self-improvement, I can actually just say create a hook to run auto skill after coding sessions. Odd code has a concept of hooks, which is events that happen. For example, you're done a session. What it's gonna do then is create a hook. Now when a coding session is done, it'll automatically run that auto skill, and then give you all the learnings for that session, for all the skills you use during that session. And it's suggesting that here, saying there's a stop hook that runs when Cloud Code finishes responding. Perfect for suggesting auto skill after coding work. And then I'll just create that hook for you. Some other areas where I've had a lot of success with this continual improvement approach is skills around things like code reviews, documentation, even writing test cases. And I find what happens over time is what Cloud gives you back as output starts to match exactly what you would want Cloud to give you as output. The human developer and the AI are really in sync. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.